The pilot training video that follows these still photos was originally an 8mm movie with no sound. You will hear the movie projector running as my mother projected the film on a wall and narrates her memory while my sister videoed it from off to one side with an analog tape video camera. This was then converted to a digital for this presentation, hence the quality and angle of the movie. I added some comments for clarification. Flight uh, training field, and this is Donovan flying a helicopter. And then later on, the uh, <coughs> instructor took the plane up and did a bunch of fancy things for us to watch. And then at the end of the day, uh, the instructor and Donovan took off to go find a pilot that had gotten lost. He had had looked at his map and thought he saw what, what was on the map and it was something else and he got way, way off and he had to land to get uh, gasoline and, and he couldn't send radio message from there because it was down below some hills and so Donovan and the, and the instructor had to go look for him. The landing maneuver you are watching is a simulated engine failure auto rotation where power is shut off the rotor blades are put in a negative position creating auto rotation then a flare to arrest vertical descent and convert momentum to a reduced forward motion and skid landing. We practice this maneuver countless times throughout flight school. This movie was filmed in the summer of 1968 at the United States Army Primary Helicopter School at Fort Walters, Texas. One of the Fort Walters 25 training stage fields is the specific location. This is in 1968. Like happens with many old movies, I have a suspicion that Mom's projector is running a bit fast. It was good we practiced so many emergency landings since I experienced 11 forced landings during flight school. Some were minor, but I had an engine failure on one of my check rides and the examiner graded me on my emergency landing. Donovan graduated as a warrant officer. And the day of his graduation, took off to come to Wisconsin to see us and had this terrible automobile accident. And that was the end of his helicopter flying, so he took a medical leave from the Army. And uh, if it hadn't been for that, he'd have probably still been flying helicopters unless he was killed in Vietnam because he was due to be sent there after Christmas. But he really enjoyed it and was very proud of his accomplishments there. It was the first time in his life that he'd ever had a goal and he was one of the youngest in his class and was at the top of the class so it was really too bad that it all worked out that way. I was the youngest in my unit 6831 primary and 6819 advanced, but although near the top of the class, I was not the top student. Donovan was too young to sign up when he first went down there, so I had to sign a paper so that he could get into the, the program. Sorry, Mom. Truth be known, you didn't sign the authorization paper. Actually, Mom didn't want me to join the Army at 17 years old because of the Vietnam War and because of me being her only son. But it didn't matter because the Army would not guarantee flight school unless I entered the service at 18 years old. I went to Fort Polk, Louisiana three days after my 18th birthday. We started in the briefing room planning our flight. Fort Walters had 25 training areas called stage fields. Most stage fields were named after Vietnam locations to prepare us for Vietnam. This stage field was named Vung Tau. Stage fields generally consisted of a parking service lane and two training runways for a right and left traffic pattern. The control tower was portable on a trailer with one emergency fire vehicle. 
Stage field training included hovers, taking off, landing to a hover, skid landings, and emergency auto rotations. Cross-country flights might be in formations or solo flights. Flights generally range from treetop level to 5,000 feet, with many around 3,000 feet. We flew with no doors. IFR flying, I follow roads. Chopper shadow, kissing a barn. I experienced 11 adverse incidents in flight school, from vibrations to engine failure, the majority resulting in forced landings. Due to loss of power, I had to auto-rotate this TH-55 into this small meadow. When an emergency landing is made, the pilot cannot take off again even if he thinks he's discovered and corrected the problem. A maintenance helicopter is dispatched, they check out and recover the problem helicopter, and the pilot is picked up and returned to base. In this photo, the mechanic is in the cockpit trying to determine why my TH-55 lost power. I'm heading back to land at the main heliport at the end of the day. We were told there were 1,800 helicopters at Fort Walters. This heliport photo, courtesy of my roommate John Lidke, shows a World War II B-17 and a B-25. I don't know which of the three Fort Walters heliports he was at, but I don't recall seeing these bombers. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel for more exclusive videos you'll see no place else that show planes, trains, motorcycles, automobiles, and auto racing, including NASCAR.